Imagine this. Western nations slapping tariffs and anti-subsidy duties on Chinese electric vehicles, trying to block them from global markets. Europe, the United States, even Turkey, all taking measures to slow China's rise in the EV world. It's as if the entire West is trying to slam the door shut. But China isn't standing still. Instead of backing down, Chinese EV companies are looking for a way around these walls. And their spotlight has turned to an unexpected place. Southeast Asia, Thailand in particular, has become a new battlefield, a strategic hub where China is quietly building one of its biggest EV breakthroughs yet. So here's the question driving today's story. Can China break through the West's blockade and dominate the global EV market? Right now, Chinese EV companies are cornered, facing some of the strictest trade barriers in history. Yet they're pushing forward with bold, ambitious moves. Southeast Asia isn't just a backup plan. It's becoming the launch pad for China's next global move. Despite the Western pushback, China has quietly become the undisputed leader in the electric vehicle world. In 2024 alone, Chinese companies sold 12.86 million new energy vehicles, accounting for a staggering 71% of global EV sales. To put that in perspective, more than 7 out of every 10 EVs sold worldwide came from China. This isn't just about numbers, it's about trust. Consumers from Europe, Asia and North America are increasingly choosing Chinese-made EVs, impressed by their technology, reliability, and affordability. Brands like BYD and NIO are no longer just domestic champions, they're global players. But here's the catch. Even with this dominance, Western sanctions still hang over China like a storm cloud. Anti-subsidy duties, tariffs, and import restrictions threaten to slow down this rapid growth. The question becomes, how can China maintain this momentum when so many doors in the West are closing? The answer is already forming. China is looking to new markets and new strategies, setting the stage for its next big leap. The West hasn't been subtle in its efforts to slow China's EV rise. The European Union concluded in 2024 that Chinese EVs benefited from unfair subsidies and imposed anti-subsidy duties ranging from 18.8% to over 20% on imports. Turkey followed suit, adding tariffs up to 50%, which could tack an extra $7,000 per car onto Chinese EVs. Even the United States stepped up the pressure. From 2024 onward, EVs sold in the U.S. cannot use battery materials from China, and tariff rates on Chinese-made EVs were raised to 100%. This isn't just about numbers. It's a strategic attempt to curb China's influence in the global EV market and protect local manufacturers. For Chinese companies, this is high stakes. They can't rely on past success or domestic demand alone. Innovation, Strategic pivots and global thinking have become necessities. The Western blockade has created a high-pressure environment. But sometimes, pressure produces diamonds. And that's exactly what China is attempting, to find a way around these barriers by looking toward Southeast Asia, where opportunities are opening faster than in the West. Faced with tightening restrictions in the West, China began looking for new markets, and Southeast Asia quickly emerged as the answer. Countries like Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia offer more than just friendly policies. They have abundant natural resources like nickel and lithium, which are essential for EV batteries. Chinese companies didn't waste time. In Malaysia, a $2 billion battery project was launched to produce power and energy storage batteries, scheduled to start production by the end of 2025. In Indonesia, CATL, the world's largest battery cell manufacturer, announced a $1.2 billion, 15-gigawatt factory in West Java, expected to go commercial in 2027. Southeast Asia isn't just resource-rich. Governments there are actively supporting the EV industry with incentives and infrastructure development. For China, this region isn't a backup plan. It's a strategic pivot. 
Thailand, in particular, is emerging as a central hub where China can build, innovate, and expand without Western interference. This sets the stage for something even bigger, a super battery factory in Thailand that could redefine China's influence in the region and globally. You know, Thailand isn't just a random choice for China's expansion. It's actually a perfect launch pad for EV growth. Under the 330 EV policy, Thailand aims to sell 225,000 electric vehicles by 2025, 725,000 by 2030, and achieve 100% electrification by 2035. These are honestly ambitious targets, signaling the country's serious commitment to becoming a regional EV powerhouse. To make this happen, the Thai government offers strong incentives, reduced taxes on pure electric vehicles, dropping from 8% down to 2%, direct subsidies ranging from 70,000 to 150,000 baht per EV, and financial support for infrastructure and research. Essentially, Thailand is rolling out the red carpet for EV manufacturers. For Chinese companies, these policies align perfectly with their expansion plans. Thailand offers low-cost production, government support, and access to a growing market, all while avoiding the heavy sanctions of the West. And this is where the story gets exciting. China's super battery factory in Thailand isn't just a factory, it's actually the centerpiece of a regional strategy that could reshape Southeast Asia's EV industry and set China up as a dominant global player. China's next big move in Southeast Asia is, well, pretty bold. Wanda is investing $1.5 billion to build a super battery factory in Thailand, making it the largest battery production base in the country. The scale is massive. The factory will cover 75 hectares and integrate both production and research and development under one roof. Why does it matter? This isn't just about making batteries for Thailand. With an annual production capacity of 50,000 batteries, this factory positions China to supply electric vehicles and energy storage systems across Southeast Asia and beyond. It's a hub that strengthens China's control over the regional supply chain, bypassing Western tariffs and trade barriers. Think of it like a chess move. While the West is trying to block China at one end of the board, China is quietly building power in a new territory, ensuring its pieces, technology, production, and markets are all connected. This super battery factory isn't just a project, it's actually the cornerstone of China's strategy to dominate the EV market in Southeast Asia and create a blueprint for global expansion. The Wanda Super Battery Project isn't just big in size, it's honestly advanced in technology and scope. The plan includes two modern factories in Thailand's Kabor province, producing lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, energy storage, and other new energy products. What makes it unique is its cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach. From manufacturing to recycling, the factory will manage the entire life cycle of a battery, reducing waste and environmental impact. Beyond technology, the project will have a huge local impact. It's expected to create over 4,000 jobs, including more than 900 engineers and researchers, boosting local expertise in EV and battery technology. High-tech production methods, energy storage systems, and a recycling loop will ensure efficiency, quality, and sustainability. This factory isn't just about today. It's about long-term leadership. By securing supply chains, integrating innovation, and building a skilled workforce, China is positioning itself to dominate Southeast Asia's EV industry for the next decade and beyond. Building the super battery factory in Thailand gives China both economic and strategic advantages. First, production costs are significantly lower, about 25% cheaper than building similar factories in China thanks to tax incentives, reduced tariffs on machinery and financial support from the Thai government. Lower costs mean higher profits, which can be reinvested into more factories and research and development. Strategically, Thailand's location is perfect. As a hub in the heart of ASEAN, it provides easy access to neighboring markets like Malaysia, Indonesia, and Singapore.
On top of that, Thailand has joined multiple free trade agreements, including with Australia and Japan, which allow Chinese battery products to circumvent anti-dumping tariffs from Europe and the United States, expanding China's market reach. There's also a resource advantage. Thailand discovered over 14.8 million tons of lithium reserves in 2024, making it the third largest in the world. By combining local resources, low production costs, and strategic trade agreements, China strengthens its regional dominance and secures a powerful foothold in the global EV and battery market. Southeast Asia is quickly becoming China's new EV frontier. In Thailand alone, Chinese brands dominate around 80% of the electric vehicle market, with BYD leading the charge. Consumers are responding to Chinese technology, affordability, and reliability, and loyalty to traditional Japanese, European, and Korean automakers is declining. The trend isn't limited to Thailand. In Singapore and Indonesia, Chinese EVs are gaining market share rapidly, showing that the region is ready to embrace new energy technology. This growing demand aligns perfectly with the super battery factory's capacity, ensuring a steady supply of high-quality batteries to meet market needs. For China, Southeast Asia isn't just a regional play. It's a strategic growth engine. By tapping into this market early, Chinese companies can secure long-term influence, dominate sales, and establish supply chains that give them a clear advantage over Western and traditional automakers. The next question is crucial. How has China leveraged its technological edge to solidify this advantage? China's success in Southeast Asia isn't just about scale, it's about technology. Companies like KTL and BYD are global leaders in lithium-ion battery production, energy storage systems, and EV integration. Their batteries are more efficient, longer-lasting, and safer than many competitors, giving Chinese EVs a clear edge in performance and reliability. These technological breakthroughs allow Chinese manufacturers to produce a wide range of vehicles, from pure electric cars to plug-in hybrids, as well as energy storage products for homes and businesses. It's not just manufacturing, it's innovation that strengthens the entire supply chain. This edge explains why Southeast Asian consumers are increasingly choosing Chinese EVs over traditional brands. Technology isn't just a feature. It's a strategic weapon. With high-quality batteries, cost-efficient production, and local market presence, China is solidifying its position as the dominant force in the region's EV market. The next step is to see how this strategy translates into real-world success stories across the region. The numbers tell the story. In Thailand, BYD sold 30,000 electric vehicles in 2023, capturing 46% of the market by early 2024. A remarkable feat for a brand competing against long-established Japanese and European automakers. Chinese EVs are no longer newcomers. They've become market leaders in a region historically dominated by foreign brands. In Singapore, BYD has also risen to the top, surpassing traditional leaders from Japan, Europe, and South Korea. These successes aren't accidental. They're the result of China's combined strategy of advanced technology, local production, and smart market entry. These case studies prove a simple fact. China's approach works. By focusing on innovation, affordability, and strategic expansion, Chinese EV companies are turning Southeast Asia into a stronghold, setting the stage for further growth and global influence. The next piece of the puzzle is infrastructure and connectivity, which will amplify China's presence even further. China's strategy in Southeast Asia isn't limited to factories and vehicles. It also includes infrastructure that strengthens regional influence. Take the China-Thailand high-speed railway projects as an example. The first phase connects Bangkok to Nakhon Ratchasima, covering 69 kilometers at speeds up to 250 kilometers per hour, with a total investment exceeding $9 billion. This phase alone is expected to be fully operational by 2028. The second phase, even more ambitious, spans 357 kilometers, linking key industrial and border regions. 
Once completed, it will significantly improve logistics, trade, and regional connectivity making the transport of batteries, EVs, and other goods faster and cheaper. By integrating transport infrastructure with EV and battery production, China ensures that its supply chains are efficient, resilient, and strategically connected. Thailand is not just a production hub, it's becoming a regional gateway, giving Chinese companies easier access to ASEAN markets and enhancing their long-term influence. This sets the stage for the final section, China's global vision and the implications for the future of the EV market. China's journey in the electric vehicle world shows strategy, innovation, and resilience in action. Facing Western sanctions and trade barriers, Chinese EV companies have pivoted to Southeast Asia, building massive factories, leading in battery technology, and securing regional markets. The Wanda Super Battery Factory in Thailand, combined with supportive policies, local resources, and strategic infrastructure, is a game-changer that could reshape the entire EV supply chain in the region. Looking ahead, China's influence in Southeast Asia is only set to grow. By maintaining technological leadership, efficient production, and market penetration, China is positioning itself as a dominant global force in new energy vehicles. This expansion isn't just about cars, it's about supply chains, economic influence, and the future of sustainable energy worldwide. So here's the question for you. Will China become the global EV leader? The next few years will reveal how far this strategy can go. To keep up with the latest developments, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, because this story is just getting started.